We have a small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone and a spotless sun, but that doesn't mean the space weather's boring. Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week has definitely calmed down compared to last week. Now, we do have a remnant coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone this week, and it's going to be sending us several different pockets of fast solar wind, but they're likely not going to give us much in the way of disturbances. So Aurora photographers, especially you at mid-latitude, you're most likely going to have to sit this one out because I don't think it's going to bring us much. Now, on top of that, we also have a very spotless sun. So this means that solar flux has again tanked. We are back into the high six which means poor radio propagation again on Earth's day side. And unfortunately, these conditions are going to continue easily over the next week. Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be completely flatlined here, which means by proxy the solar flux is also extremely low. As a matter of fact, if I go day by day by day, it kind of looks like a broken record, doesn't it? There's just nothing going on. We've got no sunspots. We've got no flares. Geez, we've got no flux either. So this is why amateur radio and operators and emergency responders are absolutely groaning because propagation on Earth's day side continues to be dismal. We have sporadic E if you're in the northern hemisphere, you've got a little bit of a boost, but you're not getting much help by the sun. So deal with this over the next week because these conditions are easily can continue uh, possibly for the next 10 days before we get a reprieve. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, we actually did get a little bit of activity over the past week. Right around the 8th, we got hit by a stealthy solar storm that bumped us up to storm levels for a short while, and some Aurora field reporters actually did manage to catch some photos. But as you can see, it didn't last very long. We jumped back down to unsettled and then quiet conditions. And then around the end of the 13th into the 14th, we got hit by a small pocket of fast solar wind that bumped us back up to active conditions. Once again, it's solar minimum so it didn't last very long and then we jumped back down to quiet conditions and we kind of been hovering about quiet conditions ever since but we could bump up and down from unsettled to quiet here over the next week as these small pockets of fast wind continue to hit us and even though we haven't had that many solar storms to report over the past couple weeks doesn't mean our nighttime skies haven't been graced by some gorgeous views of space weather phenomena so here's some field reports of both noctilucent clouds and aurora in many parts of the world, like this gorgeous noctilucent clouds in Denmark, and they were seen in Scotland, and in the Czech Republic, and in Lithuania, and they were seen in the Netherlands, and in Germany, and for you Beatles fans, here's one from Liverpool. And as we go over the pond, we saw some gorgeous aurora in Nova Scotia, Canada, and also in Saskatchewan, Canada. And then we go back to noctilucent clouds that were seen in Alberta, and they dropped down to the United States. We saw them in Michigan, and in several places in Minnesota. They even went as far south as California. And we also saw aurora during a solar storm in Tasmania, down under. It's been a little over a month since we last checked in at Mars, and dust storm season is well underway. Over this past week, a dust storm in the northern hemisphere occurred over the eastern Arcadia region and spread both southward and eastward towards the plains of Acidalia. The dust haze from this storm has pushed as far south as the flanks of Olympus Mons, and in the southern hemisphere, dust storms were spotted over Serenium, Aeonia, and eastern Nochesterra. Luckily, the skies were storm-free for a robotic Martian colonist's curiosity and insight. Currently, Insight is reporting partially sunny skies at Elysium Planitia, with a high of minus 23 Celsius and a low of minus 105. The winds are out of the south-southeast at 16 meters per second. But the biggest news this week at Mars is not the weather. It's the discovery of a new impact crater about 15 meters wide, that's 50 feet, near the equator in Valles Marineris. Here are some before and after pictures taken by the high-rise instrument orbiting at over 250 kilometers above the surface. The meteor that caused this crater is expected to be only about one and a half meters wide, that's about five feet, which would have easily burned up in the Earth's atmosphere before hitting the ground. But at Mars, 
it has formed one of the most impressive craters seen by the Mars Reconnaissance Observer over its 13-year history of mapping the red planet. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, and it's our partial backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from the side. So you kind of get a little view of what the backside looks like. And as you look at the sun from Stereo's view, well, it doesn't look all that different from the way it looks in Earth view. This is solar minimum, folks, and so we have pretty much a spotless sun everywhere. But you do, if you look closely, can see the fringe on the east limb of Stereo's view, that's old region 2740 and 2741. They are still surviving yet another backside passage, and they are going to be rotating into Stereo's view here in the next couple days. They are still bright regions, and it looks like they'll probably rotate into Earth view in about 10 days or so, and that could boost the solar flux up just a little bit for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. I know you guys need that propagation so desperately. But but don't worry you GPS users, it's not going to boost the solar flux up too much to cause problems for you at low latitudes, so you can rest easy. Switching to our moon, we've passed through that full moon phase on our way to the third quarter moon, and by the 25th the moon will be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from some small pockets of fast solar wind. They're not expected to be all that much, but they will be a bit sporadic. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% of chance of a minor storm kind of on and off in through the weekend. Now, mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions again, but only about a 15% chance of active conditions. And this should kind of settle down as we move through the week. Weekend, but expect next week to look a lot like this as these kind of small pockets continue to hit us. So Aurora is going to be extremely elusive even at high latitudes. So Aurora photographers, I don't know, it's going to be a tough one to call. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. We do still have a spotless sun, and I know I sound like a broken record, so we have no risk for radio blackouts or any big flares right now. This should make GPS users very happy. Your reception on Earth's day side should be fantastic. Unfortunately, it also means that the solar flux is back into the high 60s. This means poor propagation for radio conditions on Earth's day side, and these conditions will likely continue throughout this week and in through next week as well before we get a reprieve. Now also because we are at solar minimum, the cosmic wave penetration is higher than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely calming down compared to last week. Now we do have a few pockets of fast solar wind that are going to be hitting us over the next few days and possibly in through the rest of this week. But Aurora is going to be extremely elusive. So your Aurora photographers, well, noctilucent clouds might actually be easier to spot. Speaking of spot, we continue to have a spotless sun, and this means that solar flux is down into the high 60s, and radio propagation on Earth's day side is not too good. So amateur and emergency and shortwave radio responders, well, you guys are just going to have to suffer for a while, possibly the next 10 days or even a little bit longer before we get a reprieve and the solar flux gets boosted when those old regions return back into Earth view. The only really good news are GPS users. Well, you guys are looking pretty good. I mean, you've got a little bit of disturbances in the solar wind that kind of stabilize that upper atmosphere, even at low latitudes, so your GPS reception should look pretty good there. And on top of that, the solar flux continues to stay low. So GPS reception all around the globe should be top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.